I don't always get a chance to review every Linux Mint release, but whenever I do, I usually come away pleasantly surprised. After spending some time with Linux Mint 21.3, I came to the conclusion that the latest release is more of the same. But actually, that makes it more refreshing than ever. Let's take a look at the newest release. Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out Linux Mint 21.3. The latest version of Linux Mint is here, and I'm going to give it a full review. Specifically, we're going to check out the Cinnamon Edition in today's video, and I'm going to give you my thoughts. If you haven't heard of Linux Mint before, then where have you been? It's one of the most popular distributions around. It's a Linux distro that's built on top of Ubuntu, but takes it in a different direction. The flagship edition of Mint features the Cinnamon desktop instead of GNOME and aims to provide a powerful yet easy to use operating system. And with the release of Linux Mint 21.3 earlier this month, I figured it was a great time to dive back into this distribution and see what's new. And with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into Linux Mint version 21.3 and check out the latest release. So let's do exactly that. And here it is. Here's the Cinnamon Edition of Linux Mint 21.3 in all of its glory installed on my ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Like I mentioned before the intro, my first impression of this release is that it's more of the same. The same desktop layout, the same applications, the same theme, basically the same experience as you'd get with any other release of Linux Mint. But even without a great deal of change, I had a lot of fun checking out this release. And we'll start with the installer, which has seen the least amount of change. In fact, I didn't notice anything different at all. The process is more or less exactly the same as before, and I didn't spot any new features while installing Linux Mint 21.3. But anytime I review a distro, a lack of change when it comes to the installer never factors into my overall opinion. After all, if the installation process is not memorable, you can argue that means the installer is doing its job. That's exactly what Mint's installer does. It installs Mint, nothing more, nothing less. And one of the great things about Mint's installer is that it doesn't require much of a skill level, if any. And this is probably one of the reasons why Mint has a reputation for being easy to use. Once my installation was finished, I started looking through the release notes to see what new features I should look out for. While there are a few tidbits worth mentioning that I will bring up later, along with a file manager feature that I think is fairly clever, there wasn't a lot to get excited about. So I stopped worrying about new features and just started using Mint. And before I knew it, I was tweaking various things, tuning this and that, and I completely lost track of time. More importantly, I was having fun. And at no point did I feel like Mint was getting in my way. Sure, the interface can look a bit busy with all the icons all over the place, but overall, it's a simple and effective interface. The best way I could describe the Linux Mint style is that it tries to make things as easy to use as possible, facilitating the user wherever it can. And it does this without dumbing things down or getting in your way. Overall, it just tries to be logical. Another thing that I like about Linux Mint is the Cinnamon desktop itself, which has some nifty features that I wish other environments had. For example, you can name your workspaces. And this might not be a big deal to many of you, but I love the idea of being able to name my workspaces, which helps me categorize my applications by project. Mouse gestures were also quite nice and made the experience even better for me. But the interesting thing about this feature within Mint is that touchpad gestures are disabled by default for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. I didn't have any problems with this. After I enabled the feature, gestures work just fine. The problem that I have with this is that some people may not even know that touchpad gestures even exist in Mint in the first place. They might not discover this feature on their own. And if that's the case, they might be missing out on a feature they'd otherwise enjoy using. So I'm sorry to interrupt my own video, but did you know that there's a dedicated community page set up for this channel? Well, there is. You could go to community.learnlinux.tv and chat with other Linux fans. All you have to do is go to that page and sign up for an account, and I'll approve your account within a couple of days. You know, I'm always making content for you guys, so I might be glued to the camera, but if you sign up for an account, I'll approve your account within a few days, and then you could chat with us. So come on in and hang out with other Learn Linux TV fans. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Minor quibbles aside, the desktop experience in Mint 21.3 is just as great as ever. It's consistent, gives you lots of control without being overwhelming, and it has quality of life features that makes the experience even more fresh. 
Now I mentioned earlier that there's not much in the way of new features, and while that's true, there is one new feature that is noteworthy, and it's something that I quite like. We have the ability to install actions into our file manager now. And by actions, what I'm referring to is a list of commands that show up in the right-click menu anytime you right-click a file within your file manager. And this concept is by no means new. Linux Mint itself has had right-click actions forever. For example, if I right-click on an ISO image file, I see an option to create bootable USB media, and that's an action. What's different this time around is that it's much easier to add additional actions since you could download them from a dedicated app. In the Applications menu, if I bring up Actions, I see a list of current actions with the ability to download additional ones. For instance, I can download an action to generate hashes for verifying files. Once downloaded, I go back to the original tab and enable the action, and then from that point forward, it's there in the right-click menu. This feature may not be a life-changer, but it is pretty cool. But other than that, the remaining improvements to Linux Mint in this version are mostly incremental changes. There's nothing that'll change your workflow, but having the overall experience being more refined is certainly welcome. And you know what? That refined experience is exactly why fans of Mint love it so much. I mean, let's be honest. Mint doesn't offer any one big thing that you can't get anywhere else. Ubuntu, for example, also has an official spin that ships with a Cinnamon desktop. And this might seem strange to some of you since Ubuntu Cinnamon and Mint Cinnamon both share the same Ubuntu base and provide the same desktop. Even Debian has a Cinnamon Edition now. As a result, it can be hard to see where Mint even fits in anymore. But, having used the latest release for a while, I think where it fits in is quite clear. What makes Mint so popular within its fan base is how well it serves its fan base. Linux Mint is a distribution for people that love technology and are passionate about it, while also wanting to avoid offerings from big companies. It's computing on their terms. Linux Mint appeals to those that want an operating system that literally checks every box, and essentially Mint is an operating system for power users, and it serves power users quite well. Another thing that makes Mint great is how easy it is to use for average people. That's not to say that there's no learning curve, there's always a learning curve, but more often than not, how you go about doing something in Mint makes logical sense. And sometimes it goes out of its way to help you out. For example, after I signed in to my Wi-Fi network, it immediately saw that I had a printer and set it up within seconds, giving me a message that it was already ready for use. Basically, my printer was installed before I even remembered that I had a printer. So with Mint, I was able to use my computer without much thought. But with the level of customization you can get into being fairly extensive, I ended up getting lost in the experience. I ended up customizing Mint to make it my own. But more importantly, I was having fun using my computer. It's almost like Mint exists in an alternate universe where we still brag about how we have our computers set up. Don't you miss those times? However, as much fun as I was having with Linux Mint 21.3, there just isn't anything much that stands out. But at this point in the life of this distro, maybe standing out just isn't important anymore. Linux Mint has found its audience, and it serves that audience quite well. During my time with Linux Mint, like I mentioned, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had a lot of fun using my computer, and I had a chance to try this on two different computers, my ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and also my System76 Oryx Pro. On both machines, it worked out quite well. Sure, Linux Mint 21.3 isn't going to have any newsworthy features, but then again, it doesn't have to. It's a stable distribution, the Cinnamon desktop is awesome, and I highly recommend that you give it a shot. If you do give it a shot, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this release. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. And in the meantime, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. Now, I have a ton of videos that I'm working on, so I'm going to get back to editing those for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and, well, I'll see you in the next video.